I apologize in advance. I would never make you watch Tim Pool unless it was for a good reason. He's going to cover a story about a woman leaving Oxford to be an OF model. And I thought, okay, what a great opportunity to have a conversation about how one bubble operates and observes and how one bubble operates and observes. So my bubble against Tim Pool's bubble. And let's see if we can find the nuance in this conversation. But also, I'm curious about the story itself. So I haven't done any research into it. I'm relying on Tim Pool to sort of communicate it. But please note that he's reading from the star. So I don't know how mm, honest that reporting is going to be. But here we go. In a story from the Daily Star. And oh boy, do I have a whole bunch of other stories to pull up for you. Woman dropped out of Oxford to become a sex worker despite IQ higher than Einstein. Okay, stop right there. First of all, I just want to say this because I watched this um, men rate each other based off of blank. And it was like, rate each other on where you think IQ is. And one guy got 95 and one guy got like 100 and whatever it was, okay? And I tried to think about this because IQ is such an interesting idea and it's rooted in so much. Um, I'm going to say like ableism, <laughs> but I'm not sure what other word to use. But already the stories being sort of the way they're saying it is like, she's high IQ and she went to Oxford and then she, you know, she chose to do OF. And there's something about that that I think is sort of interesting. Also, I just want to note, I don't know if you can see this, Tim Pool, the, the, way he con the way he titled his video says, women keep quitting jobs for OF. I just want to remind people, OF is a job. You can't quit a job for OF. You're just quitting a job for a different job. <laughs> You pay 20% tax on OF usually. Like OF is a contracted job. You're a 1099 worker. So just a reminder, OF is a job. So women are quitting jobs for another job. That's how it works, Tim Pool. There's no way I believe it. Not that I value the concept of IQ in this regard. What does that really mean? So they don't believe she has a high IQ, apparently claims an IQ of 178. First of all, she looks like she has an IQ of 178. High IQ people look weird. They look nerdy and weird. Like they look, they look specific. She has a nerdy look. She's got a look. But either way, what does it matter? So she's like, what does it really matter? You know what I'm saying? High IQ at a certain point is a disability. Like Dr. K talked about it. Jordan Peterson's talked about it. So many people have talked about it. I'm just going to say, may I, may you never have a child with an extremely low or high IQ because it sounds debilitating being on the extreme of any spectrum, right? Balance. We want balance, people. Although I do think IQ is important. Melissa Todd's life took an unexpected turn when she took up a summer job and she dropped out of Oxford to make 600 bucks a night and enjoying lavish parties. Okay, hold on. $600 a night. What? 15, 14 K after tax, maybe it's not bad. If she works all 30 days, she probably doesn't. She probably works five days a week. I mean, yeah, that's not bad. That's, yeah. Okay. A sex worker who went to Oxford with Liz Truss is said to have an IQ that rivals Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, but gave it all up for a 600 uh, pound, $600, 600 pounds a night. Oh, pound, uh, pound. Yeah. Uh, a, a night, a sex. So is she a, a full service or is she doing all Oxfordshire based Melissa Todd dropped out of the prestigious university to pursue a career in the sex industry. Her controversial decision was hotly debated as as she meant as she meant a test when she was 12, joining the world famous high IQ society. I love Mensa so much. I pulled this up right away. US.mensa.org. Join. Take the Mensa admission test. OK, like I'd like to join a society of people who are very smart. What must I do? $60 for local group testing or private testing for $99. Okay. That's the test. If you're willing to pay money so that someone can certify you as smart, you've failed. What? What? Wait. Hmm? Good job, Mensa. Dude, I gotta be honest with you guys. Um, Am I confused? I know people who are in Mensa. And they are as dumb as a box of rocks. Well, because smart people aren't smart. I don't know when we're going to realize, like, smart people aren't smart. Smart people make dumb decisions all of the time. And I don't know the validity of Mensa or anything like that or validity of any of these things. But, like, just a reminder that smart people make dumb decisions all the time. Jordan Peterson's a great example. I don't know why we expect smart people. <laughs> Brittany, why are you subjecting us to this? Because... <laughs> 
<laughs> because I hate us. I'm torturing us because we're masochists here, apparently. I just want you to see. First of all, Evan Preach recently made a video about Tim Pool that had me gagging. It was so funny because he's just such a sad man. But just a reminder that this very sad man makes so much money off lonely men. And I will never not think it's funny. I'm so sorry. Men always brag about how smart they are. Guys, the comment section of this video is so funny. Woman, I have Einstein level IQ. Me, sure, I believe you. The woman, there are more than two genders. Me, ah, uh, now I don't. The, the, it's so funny. They mistook her IQ for her body count. <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I am torturing you by making you watch this because I need you to understand that you do not have to be smart to be successful. Tim Pool is a great example of this. You do not have to be smart to do anything. You have to just be smart enough. And that is what is so good about life. You don't have to be a genius. You just have to be smart enough. Be grateful that you are smart enough. And I love that. Like, I love, that's how beautiful the world is. And all these men that are grumpy, as she's making this money, just, you know what I mean? Like, do it yourself. Like, that's what I'm saying. Women are stupid, apparently, but men are so dumb, they can't figure out how to make money on OF, apparently. Make a decision. Are women so dumb that this is just so easy? And who who is their clientele? It's men. Are women really the dumb ones in this conversation? I'm not sure. Or does gender even play a role, really? I think it's just a certain group of bitterness against a certain group uh, who's willing to take advantage of that bitterness. Not all OF models are the, are the same. Not everyone is doing the same thing. But Tim Pool is a level of bitterness. He's like a, a group, a bubble of bitterness that is the also main reason. Like, I guarantee you, 5% of his audience went and bought her OF. Guaranteed you. Guaranteed you. IQ is an interesting thing. Intelligence quotient. There are different intelligences that make up your intelligence quotient. Someone may be very, very good at spatial reasoning, but boy, can they not comprehend real simple math. In their mind, they can image a tetrahedron and unfold it in every direction, each with a unique symbol and fold it back up and then use that visual prowess. To also, Stephen Hawking might have had a high IQ, but he also cheated on his wife. So, you know, shit person. Also, uh, Albert Einstein, you know, I, I dated a guy once who was like, you know, my, my IQ is higher than Albert Einstein's. I was like, well, I guess that doesn't mean much then. Like, what is the point of bragging about a high IQ if you still cheat on your wives and you're sleeping with 17 year olds? Like, <laughs> what is the point of bragging about high IQ if you're still jealous of girls on OF? Like, what's the point of bragging about high IQ if you're still friend, like afraid of trans people? What good is your high IQ if you're still an idiot? Why are you bragging about something that like does not help your case? To easily solve puzzles. And then you ask them something simple about like reading comprehension and they're like, huh? This is why we have uh, idiot savants. It's why you have um, autistic savants. There are many people who are ridiculously good at math. There are people who are autistic, can solve math problems like that, but they can't comprehend anything else. And, and so they need assistance in living. Yeah, Mensa is, I'm sorry. I just think it's a bunch of nonsense for people who need to feel good about themselves. Mm. There's a lot more to life than paying money so that someone can tell you you're smart. Melissa originally wanted to get into economics and was, was even named Brain of Britain decades ago by the Hertz and Essex Observer. But her career path took an unexpected turn. In an exclusive interview, she said, it seems like <clears throat> a very long time ago now, I heard a piece on the radio, I think like on Jeremy Vine or whatever, the equivalent was then, then and it sounded interesting, I, I like tests really. Yeah, I got a lot of A levels and passed the Oxford. I, I just Why do I feel like I've seen this woman a thousand times in my life? Does she not look like every high IQ autist you've ever met in your life? Like she has such a specific look. I feel like I've met this woman a billion times in my life. Exam, and I went to Oxford briefly, but then I went mad and dropped out, which is not uncommon among undergraduates. I was doing PPE, philosophy, politics and economics with Liz Truss, although we were different. We were, we were different colleges, so I don't remember her at all. Although Einstein and Hawking reportedly never took Mensa tests, many sources speculate their IQs were around the 160 mark. For context, an average IQ is somewhere between 85 and 115, and the, uh, the base is 100. So IQ changes as time goes on. If you give an IQ test to a man in 13th century uh, Wales, he'd probably score an 80, uh, based on the things that we do today. However, documents shown in the mirror suggest Melissa's IQ averaged at 178, making her exponentially gifted in the eyes of testers. Hmm. She was the first person in her family to attend university, but it wasn't a natural fit. She continued... Because she's a neurodivergent queen. University is hard for IQ. Um, 
Dr. K talked about this, and I think even Jordan Peterson said the same thing. I'm just going to overlap them because I swear they said the same thing about this. Like high IQ people have a really hard time in college or a really hard time in organized settings. And it's like that neurodivergentness where like the, you expect them to operate at the same kind of level of the neurotypical, but they're not neurotypical. Right. So they, they really struggle to like do the class, do the homework, do the thing. Um, and it's, it's definitely a problem and it's definitely like sort of a double edged sword. This is why I say count your blessings, right. And never want what somebody else has. Cause there are people right now who are like, I wish I had an eye high IQ. It's like, cool. That's going to come with its own problems. And that's the, the, the irony of all of our lives. Wanting somebody else's life is discounting the negatives that they have to deal with. We all have positive and negatives to our existence, all of us. I took a year out because I wasn't going, because I was going completely mad and annoying everyone sobbing over lectures and stuff. So I thought I'll take a year out and I saw a job advertised in the Evening Standard for table dancers at a bar. And I really didn't have any ideas on what to do, but thought that sounds fun. And they say you'll make 600 bucks a night. And I really desperately needed money and I like dancing. So why not give it a go? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you two things. I don't believe her IQ is 178. Perhaps it is. I also uh, have to say, if your IQ was on set 178 and they really did think and really do claim you're that smart, making money is easy. It's very easy. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Perhaps the issue is that she lacks perseverance. Let me tell you the issue is she's lazy. Perhaps the issue is that she's very horny. I don't. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm making you watch him. <laughs> but you can come on. It's so funny. Maybe she's lazy. Oh, she's so. Oh, he's so funny. Fuck. Tim Pool will never. Tim Pool is like so funny. Maybe she's lazy. <laughs> no, she prefers to do sex work. But I can tell you this. Here's here's some uh, some advice that was given to me by a very wealthy man. He said, being rich is easy. He talks like an autist, honestly. He's got that poetry, I call it poetry talk, the neurodivergent, like, let me tell you something about a man. Man told me one time. Like, he talks like that. Milady. I'm, <laughs> I'm just waiting for Tim to be like, milady. Write a 20-page book, compile statements from health experts on losing weight, put it into a 20-page book, the keynotes, 20 tips for losing weight fast. You run the ads on Facebook and YouTube and Google or whatever. You figure out what your cost per sale is. He says, I think it averages maybe $5 in advertisements. We'll get you one sale. And you sell the book for six bucks. You find that happy medium. Congratulations, you're rich. Then what you do is you write another one. Mm. 20 tips for dating. 20 tips for doing X, Y, or Z. 20 tips for financial success. It's really easy. You find 20 experts in the field. You take a quote from each of them. You put it into books where you said, I saw this great quote from so-and-so who said this. It's sound advice, but perhaps this would help you better. Turn the page. These simple books could be digital or physical. Amazon can auto print them and people will buy them. Now, I'm not saying this is a guarantee in the literal sense. I'm saying you understand the simplicity of creating a basic product that literally would take you 20 minutes and you understand why people would buy. It's not literally 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, scamming people. Well, I mean, I think in these capitalistic like uh, hustle bubbles, this is their version of beating the system is like build a product that people want and like people will buy it. And it's like, sure, but also, you know, like, you know, like rich dad, poor dad, like, you know how he's like super in debt and he absolutely is horrible with money and he wrote the book to get rich. Like that's sort of the irony of it all is like, yeah, but that like those people, they don't know how to make money or they know how to make money, but they don't know how to keep money. And even then, like, you know, Tim just sounds jealous, not going to lie. Let me tell you something about this particular bubble. And this is why I was thinking about bitterness because I was thinking about the video, the Shakespeare, Shan Spear, Shan Shan Spear, I don't know how to say your name, video is that idea of like these bitter, bitter men end up in these sort of anti-women bubbles. But more than that, because they're so focused on the gender aspect. It's not even that. It's just the idea that people can't believe other people are living differently from them. And then they like have to find a reason to degrade them or think bad of them. Look, one of the things I try to make really clear is I love diversity amongst people. 
I love that everybody is different. I have certain moral standards that I'd prefer people to stay within a threshold of, usually related to like being a healthy person that isn't about, you know, I mean, healthy, like mentally healthy, right? How you treat people, basic kindness stuff, you know, basic stuff. Don't rob people, don't kill people, don't rape people type things. Um, though there's obviously like context in which there's like a, I remember I said, don't rob somebody. And someone was like, um, don't you pirate music? I was like, first of all, LimeWire was in 2007 and you're not going to make me feel bad for it. Okay. Like I'm not mad at people for Googling like audiobook on random website or listening to stuff on YouTube. Like that's not what I mean when I say don't rob people. I mean, don't go into your neighbor's fucking house and rob them of their last $80. Okay guys, like please grow up. When I say, like, don't rob people, I'm not talking about fucking Spotify. You know what I mean? Like, everybody relax. I don't even know how you would rob Spotify. But I'm just saying, like, using LimeWire, I'm not talking about that. Okay. But it's this idea of, like, do the basics to your neighbors and to the people around you. Be kind to them. I think I'm always amazed when these bubbles can't fathom that people are actually living differently from them. Like, there's 8 billion people on the planet. And Tim Pool is just, like, he can't. His brain is, like, going to melt. And that's the thing about bubbles is, Every time his brain feels like it's going to melt, if he would just keep going until the bubble pops, he would have an awakening or a realization of like, oh, the world doesn't revolve around me or how I think about it. And what's good for me might not be good for other people. And what if this is just working for her? Not that I'm saying it's working for her. I don't know anything about this woman, but it's the idea like that feeling people get when they're in their bubbles and they start to get very upset about how other people live. That's almost the beginning of popping a bubble, but they don't ever go the full way. And because they don't go the full way, they don't pop the bubble. So they go back to their bubble and they get the like, you know, the the kind of like the, which is fine. I'm not saying he has to pop a bubble, but I'm just saying like, you know, if you want to. The idea that someone with an IQ of 178 lacks the capability to navigate a basic system as such to make money, I find to be laughably absurd. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm screaming into this mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, I love, oh, I love his lack of open-mindedness or curiosity. He's just so uncurious. I think the reality is she just likes sex. <laughs> oh, well, 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 well. That's it. She became I, I just, okay. Became a sex worker. Well, where did she go? They say she found herself thoroughly enjoying the job, captivating in glitter balls. What is this? She um, she needed money. She liked doing tape. What was it go-go dancing? It was really just meant to be a summer job, but you get used to used to being happy and rich. And you meet interesting people who say, why don't you do this? Why don't you make porn? Why don't you go into a peep show? And here I am as a 20, year, 20 years later thinking I'm probably not going back to Oxford, am I? Celebrating her 48th birthday with an IQ of 178, and she chose to make a small amount of money. Forgive me if I don't believe she's smart. I really don't. And I'll say this. Don't get me wrong. Maybe she just really loves this line of work. And that's fine. Follow your passions. But she could do that stuff and be rich at the same time. New York Post. Woman, uh, a Florida woman quits Chick-fil-A job. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. This is why... In <laughs> fishy, please, Brit, I'm dying. You, you will suffer, Fishy. You will sit there and suffer. Listen, this is what's important. This is why certain bubbles are not safe for like neurodivergent brains because there is a misconception about how neurodivergency works. And there's this idea, and this is why I don't believe in like laziness quite in the way that people say it. Oh, if you, you could do it if you weren't lazy. Okay, we all pick what's easiest for us. Okay, almost nobody picks the thing that's hard for them. Even when it's hard, it's usually the easiest thing you could have done. And that's why we do it, because it's fulfilling for us. Those of us who choose the hard thing to do, choose it because it's also the easiest thing to do. That's my theory about people. And so someone else's easy and someone else's hard is just different from yours. It's his inability to even understand why somebody who's smart can't also understand this particular thing, even though he said it in his own video. He said it in his own video. Someone can be really smart in this way, but not in this way. And he's like, well, if she's smart, why isn't she smart in this way? He literally answered his own question. But he can't get it because he's not smart enough to connect his own two thoughts, which is so interesting. He is the one who brought up the idea that people are intelligent in a multitude of ways. 
And you hear this a lot, especially as like a like a little girl. I heard so much from my parents. You're so smart. You're so capable. You can do anything you want. My kids are so smart. My kids are so great. Why can't they do things? My parents have a lot of smart kids. I think I'm a really smart kid. Mm, doesn't mean I can do everything. And so you have to figure out, okay, what is the smart that I'm going to pursue? And that is specific, especially if you have a more artsy brain or if you have a more specific niche in this field that requires like a PhD and all that other stuff, maybe whatever, that's specific. Everything is so specific. That's why I say know the game you're playing and play the game well. And play the game well. You know? Um, Tim Poole picked a game he knew well. And Tim's been doing this for a while. Remember, he was with Vice at one point. Tim, right? He worked for Vice. Tim Poole has been doing this a very long time. He hasn't really grown that much, if you've noticed. Not in career, but in personality. I think Tim Pool might be the most one of the most stagnant content creators I've seen in a while. He doesn't grow, much like the hair on his head. No shame about it, because I'm also balding, so I get it. But like, it's one of those things that I find really fascinating about Tim Pool. He cannot, he cannot, he has not shown one ounce of more introspection in like 10 years. And I think that is so interesting. And here he is again, just being upset that somebody is adapting and figuring out a new way to exist. He's, he was so good at adapting initially, right? Like his brand and everything was, was an adaption. He can't understand how women are adapting because it's so outside of his bubble. I've to become OnlyFans model. Now she earns a whopping $14,000 a week. I see you nurse ditches scrubs for big money making content on OnlyFans. Veteran police officer 61 retires to focus on frisky online modeling career. Hmm. Unilad. Woman, 41, who left job earning six figures to start OnlyFans, hits back at claims she made a terrible decision. Seven questions I get asked all the time since I quit my job to work on OnlyFans, says Charlie. And uh, then we have a Reddit. When did you decide to quit your job to do online content? Look, man, the reality is there are a lot of women who don't want jobs. There are a lot of women who want to be sex objects. Just a reminder that OnlyFans is a job. You pay taxes on it. It is a big job, even if you don't pay taxes on it, much like motherhood. Okay. But listen, and by the way, a lot of these numbers are inflated. Remember that a lot of the OnlyFans girls say they make a lot more than they do to bring people in. Because if people think you're making that much, they want to know why you're making that much. So then they join and then you end up making that much. OnlyFans, okay, there's two types of, there's a lot of different kinds of people who have OF content. One group of girls on OF, they're just like the Andrew Tates or the other guys in that bubble where they pretend like, I make millions of dollars. I, look how much money I make. And that makes people buy their stuff but they actually made the money because people bought their stuff. Men who sell courses are like OnlyFans girls that sell the idea that they're top content creators. So they say they are, so you subscribe to see what's going on, and then that's why they become rich, right? So it's his idea though that women don't want jobs. <laughs> Even though, trust me when I say this, OnlyFans is definitely a job. They just wanna be sex objects. What is Tim? What is Tim's job? He sells his body, his time, and his image so men have something to watch and feel good about themselves. YouTube is not that much different from sex work, guys. It really isn't. And it only feels like it is because I've, I, I think like in the same way that working at In-N-Out is different than McDonald's. It is very different. Not that different though, you know? I'm not saying all women. I'm saying many women took jobs because they needed them and have found they would be much happier not being a nurse, a police officer, or working at Chick-fil-A. That I get. Or maybe you don't even want to be an Oxford uh, a prodigy with, a, with an IQ of 178. You'd rather just be a hooker. And if that word offends you, I don't know what your problem is, because that's what you are. Is it, you know, it's funny. It's like, no, sex worker. Hooker means sex worker. What are you talking about? Calm down, hooker. Like, hooker means sex worker. They're so offended by it. I love it when I called uh, OnlyFans models hookers and this, this woman were like, 
How dare you call my friend a hooker? And there's nothing wrong with being a hooker, but how dare you? What do you do? You sound sex for money. But uh, everything is different. Words mean different things, but he's obviously doing it to be derogatory. That's why, well, why won't people own it? Just own the fact that you're trying to be derogatory. You're trying to be cruel. Like you're trying to be dismissive. And the fact that he can't do that is why he's a pussy. Just say, I'm trying to insult you. Cause like, it's not the same thing. And also, even if it was, who cares? Like, even if you were a full service sex worker, who cares? But it's the idea that you're trying to degrade it. You're trying to say like, it's not a real job. I guess neither is being a stay at home mom even though these men would say it is. Like, what's the difference? Like, at the end of the day, it's the value you put on it. Every bubble puts a different value on a different thing. This is why I say, fuck the bubbles. Pick a bubble that works for you if you believe in what they believe in as a group or make your own bubble. Because imagine, right, looking at a Tim Pool and trying to figure out like, okay, where do we compromise? Like, where do we compromise and try to like make a society together? Because Tim Pool's kind of my way or the highway kind of guy. Right. But I'm saying, okay, I'm willing to work with you, but you obviously can't also be a person that like I would want around my kids or the way you talk about people because you're purposely degrading and, and it, then you deny it and you act like a pussy when people are like, Hey, did you mean that as an insult? It's like, no, what? I, I, this is why I don't trust this whole like high IQ stuff. I will first preface it by saying, well, reminder that like, well, it's just he doesn't understand the concept around it, but that's fine. It's okay. Uh, Millennial Classics, thank you for the super chat, says, could you do a video soon on the trend of people going and talking about no contact with their parents? Also, do you think it's ever right for a parent to go no contact with their child? I've actually already covered this on stream. Uh -huh. I've already covered this on stream. We just covered it about a nurse, right? Um, do you ever think it's right for a parent to go no contact with their child? Of course. Look, children eventually become adults and adults eventually make choices. Parents under aren't parents nor children are obligated to have people in their lives, especially past adulthood. There comes a point in adulthood in which a parent is no longer responsible for that child in a big way and vice versa, depending on the relationship that they have with each other. Right. So if your parent has a child who's, God forbid, a threat to their life or mentally unwell in a way that, you know, puts them in and out of prison or asylums or something like that, and they can't care for those children in the way that they'd prefer if they have a religious belief or a political disagreement or, you know, some sort of what if the child becomes radicalized or something, it's like they're an adult, they get to make a decision, but also like parents are allowed to have boundaries and children are allowed to have boundaries from parents. So if you're asking me, is it ever right for adults to no longer talk? Yes. <laughs> Whether it's a parent or a child, you're just two adults in the world and you are allowed not to have a relationship. I'll have a picture of Einstein here. I'll preface it by saying, uh, she may be extremely intelligent and just loves sex work. Okay, for sure. But I really do think if your IQ was that high and it really did imply you were smart, you would just make yourself rich. Because I got to be honest, if you are smart, you can make yourself rich. I mean, if you're really dumb, you can make yourself rich. Mm -mm. I was just listening to Colin and Samir interview uh, a really rich person, and he was saying... Uh, this illusion that people have that, you know, again, like world ending money, like a lot of income in the bank, like you, you know, like it depends on your level of success and stability you want to get to. But if your goal is to live a lifestyle at a certain level, you would live that lifestyle in a particular way. Or I guess like it just depends, like nothing is as secure as you think it is. Even if you're making a million dollars a year, if you spend it all, you're really not that secure, right? So it's like, I don't know what her spending habits are. And a lot of smart people don't have good spending habits. A lot of dumb people become rich. Like this idea that smart people know how to make money. I don't know why he thinks that. I have no idea why he thinks that. What a funny idea. Like what a funny idea. And also not all smart people want to be rich. There's a lot of consequences to being rich you know, sometimes it's better just to be middle class. But like also, this is so interesting. And also she's making like 15K a month. That's pretty good. Even if she's like just whatever she's doing. And not that she is necessarily doing it, but like that's pretty good. Seriously, like I explained with the, uh, the selling the books online, the purpose of that story is actually quite simple. A lot of people think in order to be rich, you got to be like one of those guys on Shark Tank where the guy walks in and he's like, I love this story. The guy's like, it's this device you mount on the front of your, your house. It's a doorbell and you can connect to your computer or your phone and actually watch a camera. And the sharks were like, get out of here with this crazy idea. And that was the ring doorbell. And now that guy's a billionaire. And the ring doorbell is actually pretty awesome.
And then uh, he ended up becoming a guest shark later on. And they all, they all gave him a standing ovation because he was originally pitching them the idea and they turned him down. I think they turned him. I'm pretty sure they all turned him down. You don't need it. You don't. I mean, it is kind of funny. It was like a doorbell with a camera on it. It's like, oh, I guess it kind of makes sense. Put a clock in it, right? That's what they used to say. You don't even need to do that. You can make a t-shirt. This is the craziest thing. Like, seriously. Your IQ is 178. Perhaps the issue is laziness, okay? You make four t-shirts. You make a website called... What? He's trying to save her. That's... Like, that's the... Pro He's trying to save her, right? He's trying to be like... I think this is the illusion. And this is, I've actually started to rebrand my OF because I want to make it clear, like, I think of my stuff as like erotic art, right? Because like, I want to make it clear when you're an artist brain, you don't rely on the income. The income is just a plus. You would do it anyways, right? Like I didn't start an OF to make money, even though money is a part of it. It's a job, right? But I was always doing that work for free, but then I was like, oh, I could make money off my art. I'm going to make money off my art. So I make money off my art now, which is great, right? Like that's my little artistic outlook or out output, whatever. But it's one of those things where people forget, like, you know, people do this because the love of it, but also it's a job. Even when you love something, I love YouTube. It's still a job, bro. It's still a job. A job is a job is a job even when you love it, right? Outlet, thank you. So it's one of those things that I think kind of gets lost on people, I think, where I'm not saying she's doing this. Maybe she's just doing it for a while. Maybe she likes it. But there's a whole thing of uh, lots of men do work. Okay, you know how men complain like men have to go do hard work they don't want to do every day. Why do you do it? Because I'm not a woman. I can't. I have to do it. I'm a man. Why? Who told you you have to do that work? There are so many jobs in the world. Why are the men doing the work that they complain about because a job is a job is a job and you're there for money. So you're willing to trade your body, your health for money. Women are willing to trade their body and their health for money. It just looks different based off of what, what society has deemed we fit into as a, as a appropriateness for the job, right? But it, we all make these decisions. We all, yes, sweetie pies, we all have trade-offs. All of us make decisions every day to say, okay, I'm willing to do this to survive. Remember, your financial health is how you're surviving in the world. You don't have to go break your back and do construction. You're not forced to do that as a man. You choose to do it because it, maybe you're lazy. Like Tim Pool said, maybe you're just lazy, guys. Or maybe it's just the thing you prefer to do over anything else. It's the thing that makes sense to your brain. You understand how to do it. It's right to the point. You know what to do with it. You made a decision. It's the same argument. If women are choosing sex work because they're lazy, then men are choosing construction because they're lazy. Or maybe it just makes sense to your brain and it's something you know how to do for a time. And then eventually you retire because not everyone reaches old age in, in either of these businesses, right? Some people retire. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's like people don't understand everything we do could be laziness or everything we do could just make sense to us. If you want to do something different, do something different. But most people end up doing what makes sense to their brain at the time, even when it's driving them crazy, right? Sweet of pie, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. I uh, appreciate it so much. And Sebastian, welcome to memberships. Thank you so much. And Maddie, congratulations on getting a membership. Woo -woo. Let's see, John says some of that sex work risks diseases. So does being a nurse. Yeah, there are plenty of safe ways to do sex work. Lots of them, right? I know so many nurses that have risked getting HIV so many times because clients go crazy, things go wrong, they've been punctured with needles. Like nurses have a very high risk of running into, possibly running into illness. And so it's kind of interest, interesting. It wouldn't be a reason not to get the job if it's within your risk profile. And I think like everyone has to remember that. Every job has an element of risk. Every existing has an element of risk. If you choose to bring a baby into the world, you are saying, I am willing to risk the safety of this child for the chance that it might have a good life. Period. Every one of us is risking something. And that's why you have to be diligent or at least thoughtful about what you're risking. Right? 
Um, do you think it's worth taking an IQ test to understand yourself better? Sure. Why not? One of the dates I had with my partner is we took IQ tests together and I thought that was kind of cute. But I burn out on tests really fast. So he helped me with the last few questions because I was like, I can't think anymore. That was fun. That was like a cute date. It was just an online IQ test, you know. But I enjoyed it for the first, you know, so many questions. I was like really amped. And then I got really tired by the end of it. But that's that's my uh, that's my brain. My um, I have family in education. And they said if I was in school now, they would give me like longer testing time to like account for that thing, which is what I would be the most worried about going to school is like I would need a lot of time because I literally get like burnt out very quickly. I just can't. It just takes it's a lot of spoons. Let me tell you. And you just take some old joke, one liner and put it on the shirt. And then you advertise the shirt on Facebook. Wow, Tim Pool. Thank you for the business idea. Wow. He's amazing. I guess everybody in his audience is a fucking idiot because they aren't becoming genius millionaires. He basically just said everybody in his audience is dumb as fuck because none of them are smart enough to do any of these business decisions. Instagram, and you will sell those shirts. There's better products and better ways to do it. And you're going to be doing work. You're going to be checking to make sure that your, uh, your ad costs are lower than the selling point. Otherwise, you're in the red and wow. you're going to be in the black. But you will effectively automate a system. It's <laughs> Pheasants is, I mean, is he wrong? Um, not necessarily, but if it was only that simple, it is not that simple. Businesses like this open and close every day in America. If only it was this simple, right? Yeah. He is basically describing drop shipping. You said, is he basically just, he is technically so many people think that, oh, this is so easy. I'll just do it. It is easy enough if you know what you're doing and very hard if you don't. And I've seen so many people crumble and fail at these businesses. And again, it's not a matter of just being smart. It is so much more because if it, guys, it's like that YouTuber with a million subscribers who, um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Pheasant says, I was saying, is he wrong to calling his viewers idiots? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Well, in that case, I mean, in that case, <sighs> agreed. But yeah, I wish I wish it was this easy. Do you guys remember that mil that million subscriber YouTuber that tried to sell merch and she only sold like 20 sweaters and everyone made it like, why did that happen? Because it's not just like asking your audience to do something. It's really difficult. And your margins, you only get like a dollar or two dollars per merch you sell, maybe five dollars usually. Like it's very small. So in order to make any money off of merch, you would have to sell like thousands of, of whatever you're selling to have it account for anything. And that's why it's really difficult to make merch even a thing, really. Most people just have it for funsies. I mean, I have it because I needed actually to wear clothes every day. And I was like, I'm just gonna make my own shirts. And boom, you know what I mean? And winter's coming, so I'm gonna wear my sweater more. But it's kind of like one of those things where I think Tim Pool is doing this thing where he's like, oh, if, I, if you were smart, you would do this. Well, it, I could say that about Tim Pool. If he was smart, he would do this. What does smart mean? It's dependent on the bubble. There's like this joke where my parents are always like, you were so much smarter at 10 years old because you knew the love of Christ and you knew that being a Republican was better. And I was like, uh-huh. Sometimes for people being smart is just you agree with me. Oh my God, you're so smart. You agree with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what some people think smart is. Some people think smart is just when you agree with me and we, yes, okay. Right? It's, it's, it's simple. There's, if you're really, really smart, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to do anything else. But I suppose you can also be lazy. Now, it is what it is, my friends. That's this is like such a funny idea. Okay, this is it for this video. Okay. All of this to say, oh my God, thank you. Exactly. If he was smart, he'd do OF. Okay, did you guys see the, okay. Did you guys see that Army Hammer? Remember how we did an Army Hammer update? This is kind of, this is related. Army Hammer lost all of his money. He doesn't have it anymore because he got kicked out of Hollywood, even though he comes from literally a billionaire family. But more than that, he had to sell his truck because he couldn't afford the gas for it anymore. 
Somebody was very bad with money or something went wrong. Can you imagine being Army Hammer? Start an OF. I mean, if Army Hammer started an OF, he would make bank. And now he's on TikTok talking about how he had to sell his car because he literally can't afford the gas anymore. So I've been back in LA for a couple of weeks now. This is my truck. I bought this for myself uh, in 2017 as a Christmas gift for myself because I've, I've had pickup trucks for a long time and I have loved this truck intensely and taken it camping and across country multiple times and on long road trips. And I took it for one last road trip to CarMax. This is not an ad for CarMax. Uh, this is because I'm selling my truck. Uh, since being back in LA, I have put about four or five hundred dollars worth of gas in it and I can't afford it. I can't afford the gas anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean this truck, like kids home from the hospital, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> amazing trips, amazing trips. But you know what? That's okay. Like is he for real right now? It's like be for real right now. Be for real sell your fee photos on OF, like be serious right now, sir. Like, what are you talking about? I have to sell my, he was just on Piers Morgan crying like a baby. You know what I mean? Like there ain't no way, bro. There ain't no way. So silly. Anyways, okay, let's see. Let's answer some chat and then we'll go to a different video. Different video. Do -doom, boom, boom. Let's see. For SWs on OF, has anyone ever leaked humiliating customs they ordered from you? I will say this, never make anything you wouldn't want leaked. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Like there's nothing I've created that I wouldn't be like, I would be embarrassed leaked. I don't make stuff I'm embarrassed about. Like even if I, even old opinions I've had, like, you know, I'll say like, oh my God, embarrassing, but like, not really. It's just like, what do you, that's just like where I was. It's like a documentation of history, you know, but don't create anything on adult content. You wouldn't want to have leaked, but also, you know, you don't have to do customs. PPVs is a great way to make money. You know, customs is a good way to make money, but I think like if you don't want anyone to feel like they have any sort of like intimacy with you, the best way is to do PPVs. And it's true, like I make a lot of my money on PPVs. So that's how I make a lot of my money is subscribers are a good amount, but like not really, that's just to get your foot in the door. You always get content. There's like a ton of content for those people, but most people I think look forward to the PPVs, right? Anyways, okay, with that said, if Tim Pool was smart, he would start an OF. And if Army Hammer was smart, he'd start an OF. I'm just kidding. Tim Pool could not start an OF. He actually wouldn't make any money. But Tim Pool, if he was smart, would understand why people start OFs. You know, but Army should definitely start one. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life is a fool